If you are receiving this transmission, you are the resistance. Declaring war on the New World Order. TruthRadioShow.com Shalom and welcome to the Dan Bedani Show on TruthRadioShow.com. So we're in this deep, in-depth, comprehensive study of the book of John, chapter 10. So if you missed chapters 1 through 9, they're on our playlist here on TruthRadioShow.com or the YouTube channel that you're watching it on. So please hit like, share, subscribe, and click that notification bell to stay up to date with what's going on on TruthRadioShow.com. So again, welcome to the book of John, chapter 10. And before we begin, guys, we've got a specific Bible study approach like we always do. Uh, to pray for wisdom and understanding before we even start this. And let's do that right now. So Jesus, Yeshua, Messiah, we come to you again, once again, to ask for forgiveness for our sins and trespasses. And thank you so much. I can't thank you enough for going to Calvary for us and uh, just shedding your blood for our sins. And we're in forever in great, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, forever in depth, is a better word to say, forever in depth to you, uh, Lord and Savior. And thank you so much. And we ask you to cover us with your precious blood to protect us all from the forces of evil. And Heavenly Father, we come to you and ask you that you could deliver the Holy Spirit upon us to give us great wisdom and have the word of you written upon our hearts. And protect us, Lord, and I pray for everybody here in your name to comfort everybody and protect them if they're feeling any at all sick or uh, emotionally distraught. Uh, just anything that's going on with them, you know, spiritually, physically, to protect them, Lord, and comfort them. In your heavenly name we ask, amen. So that being said, guys, we read the scripture in context. We don't just read through the Bible. So if you're just joining us, I encourage you to go watch the other chapters before we go any further. Start at chapter one, because we don't just read the Bible, we actually study it. So we read the scripture in context, because context is key, and let the scripture interpret scripture. We don't bounce around all over the Bible. Uh, I want to point that out right now. We don't read a couple of verses in one chapter here, jump to another chapter or a book, whatever. Case. We don't do that. We read in context because you miss so much meat of the scripture when you do something like that. Unless you've got a uh, certain st uh, series going on, you got to do something else. But when you actually just read the word, you only stay within that chapter. And so you can fully absorb it if you want to understand it. But if you already know it, yes, there's nothing wrong with going to different chapters to match things, absolutely. But to get to learn the Bible, I would strongly recommend just going through it chapter by chapter and reading that in context and staying there until you're done with it. So if you've got a Bible, guys, please open it up. And thank you, Andy, on ShakeAwakeRadio.com for carrying us on your awesome network, which is the audio network, so the people listening... Uh, please open your Bibles up, and those of you watching, the Bible's right on screen. So we use the King James. So let's begin. So before we start with chapter 10, I want to uh, pick up where he left off. So this is where Jesus healed this blind man on the Sabbath. And this guy was born blind, and Jesus spit in the ground to make clay with the dirt. And put it on his eyes and told him to go to the healing pool there. And wash it off. And he washed it off and he was, uh, first time in his life he was able to see. So, of course, the Pharisees started questioning him and everything else. And, yeah, the man ended up getting kicked out of the synagogue because he acknowledged Jesus could be the Messiah. Then when Jesus met him outside the synagogue, he told him, yeah, I am the Messiah. And the man fully believed him. So now, the, the again, we left off. Some of the Pharisees, which were with him, heard these words, right? And they, they were outside the uh, synagogue. So they heard what Jesus told this man, and they went up to him and asked him, are, are we blind also? And Jesus told him, if you were blind, you should have no sin. But now you say, we see, therefore your sin remains. Basically telling them, you're spiritually blind. And they are, even to this day. Because 2,000 years later, they still don't believe Jesus is Messiah. Anyway, now, Jesus goes on to say, verily, verily, and again, when he says that, it's like, pay attention. Because what I'm going to tell you, you need to understand. That's what, he, what, what I believe that means, anyway. He goes, verily, verily, I say to you, he that endures not by the door into the sheepfold, sheepfold, but climbing up on some other way, the same is like a thief as a robber in a robber. 
So what does this mean? And he that enters not by the door into the sheepfold. So if someone you, know, you normally know when people come to the door, right? <laughs> That's what he's saying. But already thieves and robbers come in through the, the windows or something, right? They climb up on something to get in. The same as a thief and a robber. But he goes on to say, but he that enters in by the door is a shepherd of the sheep. So he's telling him, like, you, what he's trying to say here, right? He's telling the Pharisees, listen, you have all these other ways to try to get to the kingdom of God. You're not coming in. And if you enter by the door, who's the door? What, what is he talking about? The door is Jesus himself. If you enter through me, you'll become a shepherd of the sheep. Jesus is the only door to, uh, to the Father. And he goes on to say, To him the porter opens, and the sheep hear his voice. And he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. So what he's saying is, if you look, read the book of Enoch too, uh, it's an amazing book. He talks a lot about the sheep and sheep and the, the shepherd and all that. Yeah, he's referring to Jesus. Thousands of years before Jesus was born in the flesh. This is why the, the Kabbalistic people didn't want the book of Enoch anywhere near the Bible in the Catholic Church because this is a whole new story altogether. A whole new show, I'm sorry about that. Don't mean to drift off, but yeah. Anyway, We've done shows on it, so go please check that out on Spiritual Warfare shows. And also, now you see TV's Midnight Rides done many shows about the Book of Enoch. But anyway, uh, he says, To the porter that opens, and the sheep hear his voice, and he calls his sheep by name, and they lead him out. So that's Jesus calling us by names. We hear his voice because we're part of him. Follow him. And when they, he puts forth his own sheep, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him. And for they know his voice. So question out there to everybody listen, right? Do you know Jesus' voice? Obviously we've never heard the actual voice of Jesus yet. But do you know his voice? In the spiritual sense here? And I hope and pray we all do. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, because basically what he leads, we do. As we're reading here, we're learning about Jesus, right? So therefore we do. You know, it, to an extent that we can't go healing people and all, but... We try to live the life of um, Jesus, win souls for Jesus, right? And he goes on to say, A stranger will they follow not, but will flee from him, for they know not the voice of the strangers. So when some false prophet comes along, right? Some false prophet, some false teacher, some uh, devil comes along to try to lead you astray from following the flock. We're following the sheep of God, not the sheep on the planet. Yeah, the sheep on the planet is not the sheep of God. The sheep will follow the, anything the media tells them to do, anything the authorities tell them to do, they just follow without questioning, right? That's not what you do. We don't follow the, those sheep people. We follow the sheep, we are the sheep of God. And a stranger he's talking about, right? This is, again, false prophets, false ministers and all that, Satan himself. The true people of God don't follow them. They don't recognize their voice in a spiritual sense. So we, in other words, we don't, we're don't we not fooled by these false people. So this parable Jesus spoke unto them, but they understood not what the things that which you were spoken unto them. So I love how Jesus does this, right? He tells you something, right? Gives you a parable, and he goes on with another one, maybe two more. So you can, because that these people, like they, at this point right now, he told them, now he laid out a, a, a parable, right? About them not seeing because they still remain with sin. At this point, they still don't understand what he's talking about. <laughs> so Jesus, again, for the third time now, he says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I am the door of the sheep. Now I just told you that? That door is Jesus? It's right there. He's telling the Pharisees, I am that door. Because you don't understand me, so what I'm trying to tell you, because he's trying to tell them in the in indirect way. Now he's directly telling them, yeah, I am that door of that sheep. And all that ever came before me are the thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not hear them. 
I am the door. By me, if any man enters in, he shall be saved and shall go in and out and find passion. Do you get what it's saying now? Like I said, it's a spiritually, uh, to, uh, uh, like metaphor spiritually. You follow me, okay? You become my sheep. Follow me, you can go in and out with, uh, and find pasture. He says, the thief comes not but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life. And they, they might have, have it more abundantly. So he's saying a thief, which is his false prophets, whoever the case, right? They come to destroy and kill you, the soul. And he goes, I come that you might have life, an abundance of life. He goes, I am the good shepherd. No, we just talked about the good shepherd here. Yeah, I am him. The good shepherd gives his life for the sheep. And did not, later on in this point in the time, right? Well, you know, this account in history, right? Before Jesus' crucifixion, right? He says, the good shepherd gives his life for sheep. For the sheep, right? And later on, in a couple chapters from now, you're going to see, yes, he did give his life for a sheep. That's us. He gave his life for us. And he's telling them, like, basically, yeah, I know you guys are going to crucify me. Because that's part of the plan to, you know, to die for the sins of the world. But he that is heroin and not of the shepherd, whose own the sheep are or the not, seeth the wolf come in and leaves the sheep and fleeth. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep. So what he's saying, right? A good shepherd stands by, okay? This goes a long way. <laughs> uh, a lot of things are coming to my mind right now. So I'm going to put, I'm going to lay this out blunt, okay? And I can care less if people take offense to this. Muhammad, right? Muhammad claimed to be the shepherd of his sheep, right? When every time when danger came, he fled and put his own people in harm's way. This is true. He put his own people in harm's way so he could get away. And many other false prophets that came along with false religions said did the same stuff, right? When it came up to you know, push comes to shove, yeah. Jesus didn't do that. He put himself in harm's way for a sheep. He gave his life for a sheep. Muhammad didn't do that. Nor did any like Joseph Smith or anybody else do that. And I, I could care less because right? we're supposed to expose the deeds of evil. I'm not judging. I'm judging righteously. And it is the job job. I don't care what people tell you we're supposed to respect other religions. Show me any way the Bible says that. Because I know today's 501c3 churches, I heard it a million times. Oh, we're supposed to respect people's beliefs and religions. You tell me anywhere, and, and the thing is, yeah, anywhere in the Bible that even remotely says that, you won't find anything. Because all these religions are opposed to God, the real God, the Bible. They're opposed to Jesus as the Messiah. And they glorify themselves. So I am not going to at all bend. Uh, for that at all. I'm not going to respect anything that opposes God. So whatever pastor tells you that, you tell him you better go back and read the Bible because you think Jesus is going to respect them when he returns? All these people who follow false religion, the cult and all that, yeah, Jesus is not going to say, oh, I'm going to respect their beliefs and religions and they're going to be saved. No. Only through, he says right there, he is the door. You're not going to heaven anywhere else but through Jesus. I'm going to put that out right now. I can care less what people think or say. And he's talking about, you know, when you see the wolf coming, and, the, you know, when people, when their sheep are in danger, right, they leave and put their sheep in harm's way. They flee. And the wolf catches them and scatters the sheep and destroys them, right? But the hireling fleet, because he is a hireling, and careth not for the sheep, the false prophet. Not Jesus, uh, these people he's talking about, right? He's talking about the, uh, the Pharisees right now. That you guys would easily, you would not at all put yourself in harm's way for your people. If danger came, you would flee and put them in harm's way for you. But Jesus says, I am the good shepherd and know my sheep and I am known of mine. 
As the Father knows me, even so I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. You tell me anybody in history, any so-called religious leader, any so-called prophet, or anything like that, right, that laid dead life down for his sheep, his followers, you won't find one except for Jesus. And again, Muhammad put his own people many times. I've studied Islam and all that. Muhammad put his own people in harm's way so he could get away. And you're going to see right here, you're going to see it right here as we go into the next chapters or so, that when the, the Jewish leaders came to arrest Jesus, right, with the Romans, the apostles were ready to go to, to be put to death, literally, so Jesus could get away. But Jesus told me you're going to do no such thing. And he put himself in harm's way for his own people. So he's telling this to the, uh, the, the Pharisees, right? And other sheep I have, which are not of this fold. Them also I must bring, and they shall hear my voice. And there shall be, far, be uh, one fold and one shepherd. He's talking about the people that be resurrected. I believe this is what he's talking about. The, peop, the other fold, right, is the people who are dead in him. And bring as one shepherd. So I, I really believe this is talking about which would let the scripture interpret scripture. But so far, what I'm getting out of this is like basically, if it makes sense too, when Jesus returns, right, he calls up the dead in Christ first from paradise, from Abraham's bosom, right? Then right after that, the people who are living on the earth here that believe in him, right, they catch up with them in the sky. So that's my theory about, oh, let's see what the Bible says now, right? This is why we read it in the context. We all could you know, come up to conclusions, whatever, but we read it in context to see what it says, right? So, therefore, does my father love me because I lay down my life that I might take it again? No man takes it from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my father. That's powerful if you really think about it, right? He goes, no man could take it from me. And it didn't matter for the entire Roman army. It didn't matter for the every army in Europe or whatever. It's not a darn thing. If Jesus didn't want them to take his life, at any time he could have come off that cross or even stopped them from beating them or anything. At any time he could have destroyed them all. With a legion, the age, or just himself. But he says right there, I have the power to lay it down. And I have the power to take it back again. This commandment have I received of my father. This authority. And there was division, therefore, among again, among the Jews for these saints. So after Jesus told them, right? Now, within the Jews, there's division. Because some are believing in, yeah, this, this is the Messiah. And of course, the elders, are, no, no, he's not the Messiah. You know, they're stubborn. And many of them said, he has a devil. And he is mad. Why hear him? So don't listen to him. He's a devil. That's what they're saying. He's a madman. Another said, these are not the words of him that has a devil. Can a devil open up the eyes of the blind? So there's a division among the crowd, right? Arguing each other. One side, of course, the hierarchy side, you know, the, the Jewish leaders, accusing him of being a devil, a madman. And don't even listen to him, they're saying, right? And the other saying, whoa, whoa, hold on. The devil doesn't speak like this. Uh, the devil can't open the eyes of the blind. They can't heal people. The devil can't. And it was at Jerusalem, the feast of the dedication, and it was the winter. So it was given uh, the time and place, right? And Jesus walked into the temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews around about him and said unto him, How long does this make they'll make us doubt. If they'll be the Christ, tell us plainly. So like I said in the prior chapters, right? Jesus, without directly saying, yes, I'm the Messiah most of the time, right? But he, he explained it a million different ways, right? And it's still, I mean, he's doing this for a reason. And it's really, uh, I had to hate to put it this way, about how dumb these people are. Uh, how many different ways? I, I, oh, wow. Already. How many different ways did Jesus explain to them? Show them. 
bring up the, uh, the scriptures about him, right? Yet they still don't believe. And they're still dumbfounded, right? So they said, how long are you going to make us doubt? And if you are the Christ, you are the Messiah, right? Tell us, just tell us straight out. So Jesus answered them, and he goes, I told you, and you believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. Remember the blind man in the last chapter? The once blind man telling them the same thing? How many times am I going to tell you? And I hate to say it. Oh, actually, I don't hate to say it. I care less. These Pharisees at the time, right? Bunch of dumb dopes. That's what they are. How many times have people got to tell them stuff? They questioned the man's parents a couple times. They told him like two, three times. So he's old enough to answer himself. Then he went back to him again. Oh, how'd you get uh, see you again? And the guy says, how many times I got to tell you? Now again, uh, from probably the middle of time now, they can't get it that Jesus is telling them who he is. And Jesus says, but you don't believe me because you are not of my sheep, and I, as I said unto you. Now, if you look at the world, guys, we can tell people of the world all day long to the cows come home. Whatever metaphor you want to use. To the cows come home, to the chickens come to roost, whatever you want to put it, right? We can say that to tell people all day long that Jesus is Messiah, right? If they are not Okay, if the, the sheep of God, they're not going to listen. That's what's going on here. He goes, my sheep hear my voice, and they know them. I know them, and they follow me. So those of us who follow Jesus, we hear him, his voice. We know him. And they follow him. We follow him. And I give unto them eternal life, and they that shall never perish, Neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. Not even Satan himself could pluck them out of his hand. Every fallen angel, every demon and unclean spirit and all together could pluck you out of his hands. That's awesome. So this right here should clearly, clearly by now indicate he's the Messiah, right? Clearly. But you think these dopes, the Pharisees, would understand this? I'm getting aggravated, man. <laughs> I can only imagine. I can only imagine how Jesus felt. That he's probably just shaking his head. Wow, what a bunch of dopes. I mean, look at the, the once blind man. He almost said the same thing to them, right? To his parents. Now, Jesus. And he goes, my father which gave them me is greater than all. And no man is able to pluck them out of my father's hands. Hand. So if we're the sheep of Jesus, right? Not only the enemy can't pluck it out of the hand of Jesus, right? But the father too. And you ask, wait, the father's hand, his hand? Yeah. He goes, I and my father are one. And I know this is so hard for people to digest. It's so hard for people to comprehend. It's like saying you and your son are one. You can't comprehend it in human form. How could the Father be in heaven, rule in heaven, and also down here at the same time? Because you can't comprehend that if you don't understand spiritually. Yeah, all the rules of science, as we grow up, right, we get taught in school all the rules of science and um, physics and everything else, right? There is no none of that with God. All that is measurements of man. If you think like man, you're not going to understand spiritual. you got to be blinded like man, like Jesus is saying here. You will be blind. There is no limits to what God can do. Now, here's the other thing, too. People think... Uh, you know, when Satan was tempting Jesus on the mountain, right? If you worship me, I'll give you, uh, you fall down, and, uh, I'm sorry, jump from the cliff and worship me, I'll give you the entire world, all the kingdoms of the world. They, they said they could see all the kingdoms of the world from that one mountain. And people say, well, it's not a mountain in the world you can see all the kingdoms from. That's impossible. Oh, yeah, it's impossible for you, me, and everybody else here, but not impossible for them. They're spiritual beings. You think it's impossible for Jesus to see other kingdoms of the world from a mountain? 
or Satan. And again, you got to get out. When you come to the stuff, guys, and uh, if you haven't seen it already, you got to break out of the conditioning. The laws and limitations set by man that you grew up brainwashed with, right? You got to pluck them from your, uh, your ma- uh, brain. Not to sound like the movie The Matrix here, right? You got to unlock your mind. You got to free your mind, okay, from the limitations the world put around you. Those laws, science laws and all that, they're nothing but laws of man. They don't exist to God. God defies them every day, all the time, all day. Unlock your mind, guys. We are not of this world. He says to be in the world, but not of the world. If you could clearly see what he's saying here. And nobody could pluck him up, us out of him. And he goes, I am the father, and the father are one. And remember in the prior chapters, it says before um, Elias and Jacob and all that, I am. He was here since the beginning of time and before. He was only manifest in the flesh, inseminated through the Holy Spirit, into Mary to come into the world in the physical form to die for our sins, to atone for this. Because we uh, back then he used to have um, to sacrifice a sheep or something to atone for sin, a blood sacrifice, right? He was the final blood sacrifice. That's why today we don't no longer have to do stuff like that. Because Jesus atoned for our sins. And if you can understand, him and the Father are one. Yes, at the time they're two different uh, physical beings, but they're one. You've got to understand how this works in a spiritual sense. And yes, God could be everywhere. He could multiply himself times a million and still be all one. <laughs> so break out of that condition. It took me a while to do it as well. All the laws of man, science, and all that stuff, throw them out of your head. Take that box off your head, that box called the uh, education of the world there, and the science limits and all that. Take that box off your head and throw it. Verse 31, and the Jews took up stones again to stone him. So when he said right here, they kept saying, well, just tell me, you know, plain and simple, are you the Messiah? You, you come to the Messiah, right? Then he goes on and says, yeah, yes, I am the Father one. Well, as soon as he said that, right, the Jews, right away, they took up stones away to stone him. And Jesus answered them, said, oh, many good works I have showed you from my Father. Which of those works do you want? Why you want? Which one of them you want to stop me for? Right? I showed you all these good works, and I claim I am from the Father. I, for these, you know, I've done this for the Father, right? So, which of those works you want to stop me for? And the Jews answered him, saying, "For a good work we stone you not for. So we're not stoning you for a good work, but for blasphemy, because though the saying, being a man." Make it thyself God. So what they're saying here, no, because Jesus said, show me one good work that I've done that I deserve to be stoned. And the Jews said, well, no, no. All the good works you did is fine. We're not stoning you for that. But you committed blasphemy because you claimed to be the Messiah. You claimed to be God. And they did say, because it's blasphemy, and because of that, being a man, you make yourself a God. You make yourself God, right? And Jesus answered them, saying, It is not written in your law. I said, Ye are gods. So he's saying that this is not written in the law. And are you gods? You know, question, are you gods? Did you make the commandment? Did you write it? And he called them gods unto whom the word of God came. And the scripture cannot be broken. And say ye of him whom the Father has sanctified and sent into the world, thou blasphemous, because I said I am the Son of God. So you say of him uh, who the Father has sanctified, right? The Father sanctified me. He sent me into the world. Now you claim I bl- uh, I'm committing blasphemy because I said I'm the Son of God. If I do not the works of my father, believe me not. He goes, if I don't do the works of my father, right? Don't you don't believe me. You don't have to believe me. But if I do, though you believe me not, believe the works that you may not may know, I'm sorry, and believe that the Father is in me and I in him. So right here you got. I and the Father are one, right? 
The Father is in me, and I in him. They are of one spirit. So he's telling him right now, he's challenging him, right? Listen. Again, I am doing the works of the Father. If I do something that's not of the Father, yes, absolutely, pick up a stone and throw it right at me. You don't have to blame me. But Jesus did work of the Father, right? So therefore, they sought again to take him, but escaped out of their hands. So as I sit there and discuss, all right, are we going to take this guy now or are we going to arrest him? So the idea of stone stopped because it was out of... You know, right away, like, oh, you claim to be God, we're going to stone you, right? So Jesus just, like, really threw the law right at them, right back at them, right? Made them think, bunch of buffoons, uh, uh, really, they really are. So it made these buffoons think, like, oh, all right, so do we arrest him now? But before they, they um, could he do anything, he, Jesus escaped out of the hand. And went away beyond Jordan into the place where John at first baptized and there he abode. So he went to the place where John at first baptized, right? And he stood there for a while. And many resorted unto him and said, John did no miracles, but all the things that John spoke of this man were true. And many believed in him there. So this is where John was baptizing people, right? And by the way, this book, John, here, yeah, this is John. Uh, I think I made a mistake when I first started uh, the series here. The book of John here is by John the Apostle, not John the Baptist. So I, I think I might have said that in the beginning. There was a John the Baptist. I apologize if I did. Somebody pointed it out one of the listeners. So um, this book here is written by John the Apostle. So this this is different John here. So he went to the place where John the Baptist was uh, first baptized. And he stood there for a while, right? So many of them, they knew John. And they know that John didn't do no miracles. He just baptized people, right? But John, okay, before Jesus came around, John spoke of, you know, the coming of Jesus and everything about him, right? And they recognized it. It's like, well, this is, this is exactly the person that John was talking about. And many of them at the right then point, yeah, they started believing him. So sorry to get all uh, jumpy and frustrated, guys. It's just like, uh, they're really aggravated. I couldn't imagine. <laughs> like I said, I can only imagine what Jesus was thinking. He's like, oh, all right, these people. How many times are we going to tell them? <laughs> Unreal, isn't it? So we'll see you for chapter 11. And uh, if you've got any questions or comments or anything like that, please put it in the comment section. And uh, if anybody says, well, you're not speaking like a Christian, Dan. Of course I'm not, because I'm not Christian. I don't belong to any of the 10,000 or 40,000 different denominations of Christianity. I am a follower of Jesus Christ, the order of Melchizedek. I follow the word of God, the Father, and Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. I don't belong to any religion. I just want to put it out there real quick. And I say, I speak how it is. And I try to contain myself sometimes. I may uh, follow up with a uh, cuss word or something. But I speak directly, just like Paul did, just like Peter did. Just like Jesus did, I tell you flat out, I'm not going to be politically correct. And if you want a politically correct person, you got the wrong place, buddy. The wrong place. Go back to your 501c3 churches, your dumbed down pastors, and that blow smoke up your air in and tell you everything you want to hear. I don't do that here. I tell you exactly how it is, the way it is. The truth hurts, oh well, deal with it. Build a bridge and get over it. I had to. It's a bitter pill to swallow for all of us, but you know what? Deal with it. So if you want somebody to smooth talk you, blow smoke up your air, and like I said, you go back to your 501c3 churches, your, uh, your, your dumbed-down religions, I'm not going to do that here. I love everybody and everything else. I respect everybody. But however, you know, when it comes to the Word of God, it must be taught the way it's supposed to be taught. Straight up, un un adulterated, unfiltered truth. Just as like Jesus taught, Paul taught, Peter taught, John taught, straight up. So thank you guys for joining us here, and uh, go to truthredoshow.com, and it's the easiest way to find us now. So um, I got uh, several channels I uh, upload the stuff to, so regardless what channel you're watching this on or listening on, on shakeawakeradio.com, go to truthredoshow.com, there's a link to all our shows too, and all our uh, brothers and sisters uh, platforms there. So 
You go there, truthradioshow.com, or you just click on the Bible series. Then you got the book of Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John. Like we're in John here. You click there, and you go to each chapter. Or the channel you're watching us now, you can hit the notification bell. Just hit, uh, like, share, and subscribe, and the notification bell, and you'll be uh, reminded about the next ones coming up. So we'll see you for chapter 11, guys, and thank you so much. So please don't, you know, misunderstand me coming off as a jerk or anything like that. I just tell how it is. It's all. Love you all. Truly, love you all. God bless. And shalom. And remember, you are the resistance. And trust the plan, the only plan. Read it for yourself. Don't take my word for it. Do not take anybody's word for it. Read it for yourself. We just read it, right? Well, guess what? When this is over, when I click end here, right? Guess what? You're going to take that chapter and you're going to read it again. Because it's something you might get out of it that we didn't even see yet. That's the power of the word, the Holy Spirit through us. So, and if you find something cool, guys, put it in the, the comment section. So again, truthradioshow.com, you find all the listings here. Thank you for joining us in uh, chapter 10 of the in-depth comprehensive study of the book of John. We'll see you for chapter uh, chapter 11. So if you miss 1 through 9, they're in the, uh, the playlist. So God bless Shalom again, and you are the resistance.